is there anything more pleasant than relaxing in the peace and tranquility of the countryside? It's good for the mind and the body. The problem is, most of us live our lives surrounded by noise. And there's more and more evidence to show that excessive noise is damaging more than just our hearing. A recent study puts Ireland at the very bottom of the list when it comes to our attitudes to noise. Does that really mean that Ireland is the quietest country in Europe? Or have we simply not woken up to the problem? In Europe, noise pollution is no longer considered simply a nuisance, but a genuine threat to public health. In this episode, we're going to find out just how seriously some people are affected, and we're going to see what can be done to turn down the volume. We already know that air travel is a source of air pollution, but unless you live along a flight path, you may not realise just how much of a growing problem noise is becoming. With the second runway due in Dublin Airport, and air travel increasing year by year, it's hardly surprising that people living near the airport are already taking action to combat noise. If you live inside a certain zone of Dublin Airport, the Dublin Airport Authority would pay for sound insulation, or they may even offer to buy your home for above the market value. Local schools are regularly monitored to maintain what is described as a suitable noise environment. The problem is, a suitable noise environment is becoming less and less achievable in modern Ireland. Noise is defined as unwanted sound. And excessive noise seriously harms human health. UCD's Professor Enda Murphy is one of Ireland's leading experts on noise pollution and has spent 10 years studying the impact of this hidden pollutant. There's much greater awareness of noise issues now than there were even 10 years ago. The World Health Organization has come out with a number of very influential reports. So, for example, they had one called Burden of Disease from Environmental Noise. And that document showed that about one million healthy life years are lost annually as a result of um, exposure to environmental noise. So there is a recognition, I think, at the political level as well in Europe that actually noise needs to be taken more seriously as a pollutant than it has been in the past. What are those health effects? The key health effects come from sleep disturbance and annoyance, increased risk of heart disease, increased risk of hypertension, and in kids, higher risk of having cognitive impairments such as problems at reading, attention span, have all been linked to prolonged exposure to environmental noise. So if we're at night time sleeping, what decibel levels does noise start to impact on us? So the World Health Organization recommend 40 decibels as, as being the level above which adverse health effects start to occur. And I think much more needs to be done in the future if we are going to tackle the noise health problem in Ireland. We know that a good night's sleep is good for our health. And I wonder how much noise and noise pollution can affect this. So I've come to Connolly Hospital today to talk to an expert, Dr. John Fall, about just this subject. We do know that there are different forms of sleep and different stages of sleep. So there's light sleep, deeper sleep and REM sleep. And actually people go through these phases on a certain timetable. Example would be that people go into the first dream after about 90 minutes of sleep. And that dream usually lasts 30 to 40 minutes. And then there's a dream an hour later. And that's what we call a normal sleep pattern. And there are formatted patterns for this. What are some of the reasons that people can't sleep? Right now in the modern world, there's an epidemic of sleep disorders, so people are not getting enough sleep. So environmental things are the biggest thing that disrupts sleep. External noise, external light.
When we're talking about noise, it feels like we're talking about loud noises. Do noises have to be loud to disrupt our sleep? Unfortunately, with noise, noise is a physical phenomenon. And once the noise or the sound waves hit your eardrum, and your eardrum will activate the auditory nerve, and that will stimulate your brain. <laughs> Nevertheless, there are some people that are very, very sensitive to noise. Women are more sensitive to noise than men. Women in general need more sleep than men. So then what are the knock-on effects if you don't get good quality sleep? Well, there are three big knock-on effects. And first of all, acutely, people have short-term memory loss and fatigue and muscle aches and pains. Secondly, as you get longer into sleep deprivation, you start to get physical problems. And the physical problems are classically forms of arthritis, similar to fibromyalgia, where people have aches and pains and poor wound healing. We only heal wounds and we only grow muscle and bone during deep sleep. Some people will have high blood pressure and they'll have uncontrolled high blood pressure, meaning if they take medication for their high blood pressure, it does not come down. And that's often because they have a problem with sleep. The other common thing that we see is that people who are sleep deprived in general tend to put on weight. And most sleep disorders are associated with weight gain. Sleep is an essential physical function. And if you deprive people of sleep, they will suffer from it. The evidence is clear. Noise disturbs our sleep, and that disturbance is damaging our health. So sleep disturbance can occur at just 40 decibels, and busy traffic is typically 60 and above. So it's hardly surprising that the EPA's noise maps show that roads throughout the country are a major source of noise pollution. High levels are particularly noticeable along the M50 in Dublin, a motorway close to thousands of homes, and it's an issue that Councillor Roderick O'Gorman has been actively campaigning about for a number of years. So Roderick, what's the problem here with noise on the motorway? The big problem is that uh, five years ago the uh, motorway was extended by one lane on each side, and that involved cutting back the bank and all the trees there along the edge, and that's dramatically impacted upon the residents there, upon their quality of life, and the noise levels that they're experiencing have increased significantly in that period of time. Are these the houses here? Yeah, these ones all along here are particularly badly affected, but there are other estates further up the M50 and then along the, uh, along the Liffey Valley as well, all of which have been impacted since the M50 was extended. And when we're just standing here now talking, yeah. We're shouting yeah, yeah. to be able to talk. Yeah. Noise is measured on a logarithmic scale in decibels, where 50 dB is double 40 in sound intensity. And 60 decibels is double again. When the M50 was expanded from two to three lanes, they also upgraded the junctions. Here at Blanchardstown, there are now six lanes of fast-moving traffic on one side of the motorway and the noise levels are comparable with what I recorded near Dublin Airport. I'm here in this attractive, well-landscaped, mature residential area, and all of these houses face onto the motorway, which is about 20 metres away. But we can still hear the loud roar of the traffic in the background. Hi, Duncan. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi. Thanks for... Nice to meet you. ...inviting me to your home. Come on in. Yeah, I hear the traffic outside. Yeah, and it's hard to miss. Absolutely. Yeah, well, you can hear now the difference straight away. I mean, you can hear the noise yeah. of traffic. Wow, it's very loud. It's a huge increase when you come outside. Yeah. And you've spent a lot of time designing this garden. You've got a lovely layout here and landscaping. It's very nice. Yeah, as, you know, it's the, one of the first things we did when we moved here was the garden because it was something we liked to do, to have a barbecue and friends over the weekend. But, uh, you know, we did this in 2006, 2007, but by 2009, when the upgrade started, we couldn't use it anymore. So we're talking eight years now that we've right. barely used the garden. Now, obviously, the motorway, the M50, was there all the time. Yeah. But they widened it, and that made a big difference. It made a huge difference. When we moved here behind us, there was two lanes of traffic, and now we have six on our side. Right. And you have a, there is a timber fence there. Has that helped at all? No, it makes no, no difference. Not enough. OK. Well, one thing is that that, that fence, has, they couldn't provide us with any evidence that it, it provided any noise abatement measure at yeah. all. And of course, you have a concrete wall going up two metres here anyway. Yeah. So that's there, plus the, the fence. So obviously, it's coming in over on top of it, isn't yeah. it? Do you mind if I just take some noise yeah, meters sure. here? Because I have, a, I have a noise meter here on my phone. 
the levels have dropped from the bridge over the motorway. But I'm not surprised that Lisa and her family spend so little time in this garden. There's a constant background level, well in excess of what the World Health Organization recommends for a good night's sleep. This is your bedroom now, is this it? This is our bedroom. Yeah. Okay. So this is the front of the house. But you hear, really hear it now, the traffic. It's not possible to open the windows at night. In fact, the noise is so bad that we even had to seal up our uh, ventilation. The permanent ventilation. The permanent ventilation. I'll just show you. So you can see that we actually had to, to fill it to stop Absolutely. the noise. And so obviously that's not very healthy for you. It's not ideal, no. Yeah, I can understand why you had to close the permanent vent. The motorway yeah. is out that direction, so on your gable wall. Yeah. So you, how could you sleep yeah, with all that noise? So that's, we had to, we had, just had to, like we had no choice. I mean, I've, I would say I haven't had a deep sleep in this house in years. Like our houses are way too close to that motorway. So have we got a noise pollution plan here in Ireland? Well, under EU law, big cities are meant to draw up a plan for reducing noise in their particular area. There's this uh, mouthful, the Dublin Agglomeration Noise Action Plan. But the problem with the plan is it's just maps. It just shows what the problem is. The local authorities don't have any enforcement powers. So Fingal, where I am, they can't go to the uh, Transport Infrastructure Ireland and tell them you must improve the surface on the M50. What I want to see happen is the next time they're resurfacing along that section, put in a rubberized asphalt surface. You might know the Newlands Cross Bridge, the new bridge there. They have something similar up there, and that is significantly quieter for traffic going over it. Right, so this is only putting a rubberized surface onto the tarmac. Absolutely, yeah. Another suggestion maybe is to actually reduce the speed limit in this particular section along the backs of those houses there. The noise is, is if you like, proportional to the, the speed. speed. Yeah, exactly. Then, and, and that's why you have a problem at night, because when there's no traffic at night, someone can really get up to the full speed limit there, and that can create real disturbance for residents. And in Europe, do they have laws protecting against sound? I think noise. they have a, a much greater understanding of the impact of environmental noise on people's quality of life. So when they are undertaking major infrastructure projects, that high level of whether it's sound barriers, etc., that goes in at the same time. Not, not years later. Like this is, yeah. this is Ireland's premier motorway here and what we have is a, a flimsy wooden barrier dividing between that and houses. Houses that, are, that were here before the extension actually occurred. So they have noticed an appreciable increase in the noise actually coming from the, from the M50. If that was a pub or a club or a rock concert venue, then we would have some recourse because it's a public entity, we basically have no rights and they have all the rights. Councils, when they're issuing planning permission, should be mindful of the effects of noise on people and make sure that at that stage, planning permission covers noise levels. The M50 motorway, where we're located, we're on the sharp end of the knife here because we're so close to it and because it's so busy. But it's only a matter of time before other communities in the country when the road network is either expanded our new motorways are put in and the fast moving traffic on them is going to be just as detrimental to those communities as the M50 has become to us. So it's a really big problem, isn't it? Yeah, and it's only going to get worse, so it needs to be legislated for sooner rather than later. After the break, I discover that humans are not the only animals on the planet suffering the effects of noise pollution. We live in a noisy world. Noise pollution raises our blood pressure, disturbs our sleep, and leads to cognitive impairment in children. But it's not just us humans that are affected by noise. Off Ireland's west coast, the Department of Climate Action and Environment promotes exploration to the oil and gas industry. When mapping the seafloor, the industry sets off regular blasts that can go on for weeks or months. In recent years, there's been a suggested link between marine noise pollution and mass beachings of whales and dolphins. I'm heading out into Galway Bay on the Celtic Voyager with the team from GMIT, who produced the EPA STRIVE report on ocean noise in Irish waters. So the STRIVE report was an attempt to start measuring background noise to look at 
the distribution of whales and dolphins to see where the sensitive areas where the two interact. Um, also to look at how can we measure ocean noise long term. How big is this problem and is it actually getting worse? We are an island, so uh, nearly all the goods coming into Ireland imported come on ships. So you've got ships carrying goods, you've got fishing vessels. In the last 50 years, noise is increasing at a steady rate. You've got uh, increasingly surveys that are looking for things like oil and gas, seismic surveys, but they use high-frequency multi-beam to map the seabed. That changed produces a sound as well. So there's a whole plethora of noise out there, some of it local, some of it over a wider area, all affecting different things in different ways. You know, I would argue that it's a, probably a bigger issue underwater because a lot of animals use sound as their primary sense, not sight, like we do. And when you think that these animals, such as you know your large whales, your blue whales and fin whales, can be communicating over hundreds of kilometers, um, it just shows how important sound is to them. We are very lucky in Ireland that we have good populations, good species diversity of whales and dolphins and other marine mammals, um, so that we have a responsibility to make sure that the habitat and the environment is good. The best way to record the sound of marine life is with a hydrophone, a waterproof microphone towed behind the Celtic Voyager. The hydrophone is 200 metres behind the ship. The signal is coming in through the computer, so what you're looking at on the screen is a spectrogram. As we're moving along now, and if we have dolphins come within the range of the hydrophone, you know, they could be two kilometres away, and we could detect those whistles. I think listening to the hydrophone, you're monitoring in real time. We're sitting in here, yet we're able to listen to what's going on down there. It's, it's amazing. This was when we were further offshore. So lots of common dolphins around the boat. I can't remember, there was, you know, 20 to 30. So we've got just lots and lots of whistles. And we just... And that's the whistle, that's the dolphin yeah. whistling. An EPA commission study by UCC found that seismic activity by the oil and gas industry has a much bigger footprint than previously thought. While best practice is used for these techniques in Irish waters, these blasts can cause temporary or permanent hearing loss in whales and dolphins within one kilometre. And changes in behaviour are likely to occur over hundreds of kilometres away. If you are a dolphin and you're relying on the, your use of sound to be able to communicate with your young or with other group members within a group that you live, then being able to um, hear each other is a, of huge importance for the survival of those species. But if we have background noise and all the time that noise is increasing and increasing, then those animals are having to do different things to be able to adapt to that. There's over 800 species of fish that are soniferous, so that means that they produce sound. If noise pollution is having an impact on them, and being able to detect you know, sounds or cues in the environment, then that's going to be a big issue for those species as well. With reports of mass strandings of whales and dolphins at an all-time high and a suggested link to noise pollution, noise is certainly another pressure on an increasingly vulnerable ecosystem. When it comes to where we build new residential developments, it makes no sense building in areas of high noise pollution. And the best way of preventing this is by conducting noise surveys at the planning stage. Acoustics consultant Dermot Keeney is doing one today outside Care in County Tipperary. We measure roadside noise, we measure air traffic noise, and we measure rail noise. We also do industrial noise measurements, noise from a facility, for example. We could be also involved in the likes of entertainment noise, noise, say, breaking out of a nightclub and, and so on. And if you take the sort of sounds now we've been hearing here, is that engine noise or is it tyre noise or can you differentiate between the different sounds? You can. Generally at lower speeds, the noise from a vehicle is dominated by the engine and gearbox. But once you exceed approximately 40 kilometres per hour, the tyre noise becomes the dominant source of noise. So if you think of cars travelling at speed, it's essentially the rolling noise generated by the tyres that dominates the noise climate. And in an existing situation where houses are affected, say by a motorway, and there are yeah. houses close by to a motorway, 
Are there things we can do to reduce the impact of that noise, especially at night time? Well, if you say they're existing houses and they're already in proximity to a motorway, um, you, I suppose you've missed the first element of it, which is separation distance. Noise is always reduced over distance. So essentially, the further away from the source of sound, the better. That's it, Duncan. I suppose somebody is planning to construct uh, a housing estate in close proximity to a road. The first thing I would suggest that they would do is, is carry out a baseline study to establish what the levels are at that location. And there are guidance documents, many of them from the UK, that set out appropriate levels. We can assess whether it's a suitable site or not. Um, it would be great if, in Ireland if we had some, such a guidance document, and it may be something that I would hope to see in the future. Dermot, you set up a website called noisecomplaint.ie. I felt very much in the Republic that there was very little data being collected in terms of the actual issues that were causing, noise issues that were causing people problems. So we set up noisecomplaint.ie to give people an avenue to allow them to log those complaints so that we could better understand uh, what noises are affecting people. Just to create, a, uh, increase awareness about noise and try and identify the noise issues that people are having and, and get a better understanding of them. Dermot explained that a range of measures, such as setback distances, zoning, acoustic barriers, road surface treatments, reduced traffic and speed limits, all can, when combined together, help achieve noise reduction. But Ireland is still lacking in good planning policy to protect people from excessive noise. It's remarkable that the European Commission now consider noise pollution to be second only to air pollution in terms of its environmental effect on our health. When we consider how seriously we now take air pollution, surely it's time that steps are taken to address the effects of excessive noise in our lives. The EPA are responsible for implementing the EU's National Noise Directive. So I'm down in Wexford to talk to Tony Dolan about what the future might hold in our battle with noise. It is a serious issue and that's why uh, the EPA are funding a noise research project which is going to look at the impacts of noise nuisance and also in relation to planning guidance. There needs to be better guidance for the planners in terms of how constructing the new, let's say, residential developments because we know for instance that the populations are going to be increasing, there's going to be more new residential areas, particularly along the M50 and along larger urban areas. So I think it's important that we plan properly to try and minimise the impact going forward. Because in terms of if we don't design the new residential developments properly, then we are going to have increasing noise complaints. So I think the whole area of planning for the future is very important. On a street like we're here in Wexford, where there's a lot of traffic going up and down, the noise effects can be quite difficult for people, especially at night time. What is the solution for people that are affected by noise? So what they can do is on our Live Green website, we give information on noise nuisance and noise complaints. So if people want to find out who they should contact in relation to different types of noise, whether it's transport noise, construction noise or domestic noise nuisance, etc. If they go to your home, your health, they will see information as to who they can contact in those situations. Noise pollution is having an impact on our lives and the lives of many other species around the planet. Other countries are already fighting back against noise pollution. So isn't it time we did the same? After all, it's something worth shouting about.